In this video, I am going to talk about how to use Splash to scrap dynamic sites. So for example, the site that you see right now is dynamic and all these items are loaded using JavaScript. And if I simply use a request module or Scrappy, it's not going to work. So Selenium will work, but the better solution in my opinion is Scrappy along with Splash. So step one, we need to install Docker and set up Splash. You can simply install Docker desktop and it's very straightforward. So you come to Docker site and click on get started. And here you will see this Docker desktop. So it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. So I'm just going to click on a Windows because that's what I'm using right now. So once I'm done through download, it's going to download a file. So this is the file and let's go through the installation process. So once you double click this file, the installation wizard will start and by default there is nothing much to do. You can just leave both the checkboxes and click on next. And this is going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to pause this video here and come back to it. If you see this message, you just need to close all the windows, log out and come back. Now once you are logged back in, open a command prompt and type in a docker dash dash version. So this should show you the version. That means that docker installation is complete. Now let's move on to the second command, which is docker pull scrapping hub slash splash. So this is going to download the latest image, the latest Docker image for Splash. And this is going to take some time because this is over 1.5 GB as of now. Now the download of this Splash image is done. So let's open the Docker window and set up the container. So if you open the Docker desktop, window uh, we can see that there are no containers running right now and if you go to images we can see that the splash image that we just downloaded and you can see that this is 1.89 gb let's click on run button and there are some optional settings that you can specify so i'm going to give a name to the container so let's keep it same doesn't matter the port is going to be 8050 so let's keep it like that so uh, we can change it if you want if you want to run it at 8055 or whatever we can run it so only these two things i'm going to specify and click on run button and now we can see that it is running on port 8050 so if we click on it we can see the log just be careful about this Sometimes it will show it as a 0000, but that is not the actual address. It's going to be localhost colon 8050 or 127.001.8050. So this is something you need to keep in mind. So let's open Chrome and let's browse to localhost 8050. Now we can see the confirmation here that Splash 3.5 is running. Just a quick reminder, if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please do that now. So continuing back to our video, uh, there is this specific language and this language is Lua. So the programming language Lua, this is the language that it is using. But the good thing is uh, we don't have to worry about this specific language unless we have a very, very specific need. So Right now, I'm going to start with a simple example where we just have to scrap this page. So we don't need to enter into this territory. So what we will do instead is let's open the command prompt and I have activated my virtual environment. And we are going to install one package and this package is called scrappy dash splash. So I probably already have it installed. Yes, I already have it installed. So this package makes it much easier to write code in Scrappy, which uses Splash. So let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to clear everything. So I'm going to start one Scrappy project. 
So scrappy start project and let's call this Lazada. So let's cd into this folder and let's run the command scrappy gen spider and this is about laptops. Okay, so let's name it laptop and the fourth parameter is supposed to be the start URL but I don't like to you know give anything here because anyway we have to change so just giving anything and let's open this whole thing in visual studio code so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy this url and i'm going to remove these two lines all right and instead of start urls i'm going to make use of start request function and let's start with something very basic so let's put this url in a variable so what we are going to do is yield scrappy request and pass in this url and we don't have to provide anything else because the default callback is anyway going to be parsed so it will come here and now uh, we need to create selectors so let's press f12 so i'm going to zoom in on the elements okay and just to save the time let me paste in quickly the selector that i have already created because creating the perfect selector it actually takes time so i have created the selector as a two step process the first selector is this so this is actually going through all products one by one all right so i'm going to run a loop on this selector and the second selector is for the product name so this was giving me the product name so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply copy paste the code that I have already written before starting this video so essentially note that I am just storing the selector I have not yet called get or get all method here so this is my products in fact let's rename it to something like this so this is product selector and I'm running a loop on each item inside product selector and this CSS additional CSS selector I'm adding. So the result will be that the selector will be response.css this selector and this selector added on top of it. So I'm getting this title attribute. So this is where the name of the product is and inside this span which contains rm that is where i'm getting the price so i have tested these selected they work fine but right now this line of code or this code is not going to work now let's run the spider so scrappy crawl laptop and guys there is one more thing that i wanted to remind you now this laptop spider is a part of project that's why I'm using this crawl command. If it is a standalone spider, you will be using run spider. So I've actually seen code from other developers who have created a project, but you are, they are actually running this spider using run spider. So that is not right. If you do that, your settings and other files will be ignored. So that's why we have to use crawl. So laptop scrappy crawl laptop let's run it and i do not expect any output okay so see it scrapped this site this particular web page but there was nothing no output now we already know the reason and that this is a dynamic site so there are some changes that we need to make first of all we are not going to use scrappy dot request instead what we will be doing is we are going to use splash a request so that is the only change that we need to make here and of course we need to import this and this will be coming from the scrappy underscore splash import splash request so these are the only two lines of change that we need to make here but we are not yet done we need to go to settings so let me delete all this commented code all right 
So let's see what are the changes that we need to make. The first thing that we need to do is we need to provide the splash URL. So the splash URL that we have is 8050. That is where we have configured our splash to be running. Then we need to specify some download middlewares. So I'm going to simply copy paste and I'll leave the link where you can find all these details. Now apart from download middlewares, you also need some spider middlewares. And there are two more settings that you need to put. There is one custom duplicate filter class and there is one HTTP cache storage. So these are the settings which you need to provide in your settings.url. So of course uh, you cannot remember all these settings. So again, if you look at the splash documentation, uh, which is on GitHub, you will find all these settings. I can simply copy paste from there. Now, once we have this in place, let's go back to the terminal, clear everything and let's run this crawler again. We can see that this time we have 404 for robots because it's going to look for robots in local host. So we can actually turn this off. But anyway, this is not going to affect our scrapping. And we can already see that the scrapping is done. And we have all the results. All 40 items have been scrapped. So that's why I like Splash. So this is a very good scenario where Splash can be useful. And in fact, there are many times when only your first request is dynamic and the subsequent requests are not dynamic. So inside parse, you can have other splash request or other scrappy request. So that's all for this video. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.